Welcome to Solo Pro Radio. It's the only resource for self-employed professionals to grow their business. I'm Barbara Saunders, the Solo Pro Success Coach, and it's my mission to help brilliant creative solo pros go from floundering to flourishing. And I do that as the director of the International Association of Self-Employed Communication Professionals and as the founder of the Solo Pro Academy, where I have programs focused specifically on helping solo pros build a profitable, custom-fit business. Swing on by soloprosuccess.com and pick up your free Income Accelerator Success Kit. If you'd like to join us, zip over to Solo Pro Radio on Facebook and like our page. You'll be able to ask questions, get to know our co-hosts, and find resources to help you connect and grow. I'm so excited to jump into today's call today because I've got Gail Z. Martin, who turned a corporate pink slip into fulfilling her biggest lifelong dream, writing best-selling books. Even a career in marketing did not prepare her for what happened after she sold her books to a publisher. That's when Gail realized that writing a book was not the easy part. <laughs> writing a book was the easy part. The hard part was savvy marketing, especially online marketing. It's the hardest part in any business venture, but it is the key to success. Gail used every scrap of marketing know-how she'd accumulated in her day job to prepare her 30-day guides into international bestsellers. Guides, uh, Gail's latest guide, 30 Days to Online PR and Marketing Success, which was released just like last November, will help you navigate the online world of social media and social marketing. She's got advice on how to use sites like Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn. So whether your audience are small business owners, authors, consultants, or solo professionals like you, the advice and tips you hear on today's call will help you successfully create and keep and grow your solo pro business. Welcome, Gail. Well, I'm thrilled to be here. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited. I so relate to your message. I was a marketing director in my you know, past life, and so I totally relate with what you're talking about here. Well, you know, I think most of us who came from a corporate background can relate because whatever our subject matter expertise was in the corporate world and that we've really made at the heart of our uh, new business, for a lot of people, marketing wasn't that subject matter expertise. And I realized that, you know, coming into the field with 26 years of marketing experience and a lot of background with new media, social media, mm-hmm. online PR, online marketing. Uh, that was what a lot of small business owners needed, but really didn't know where to start. Oh, exactly. And very few people are really teaching it. Even now, you know, we get a lot of hype and a lot of you know, overwhelming stuff. <laughs> But really, the basics of what you need to just get rolling is it's hard to find someone who can just spell it out in a non-overwhelming way. Well, and and it was the overwhelm that really pulled things together for me to to create my 30-day system. Mm -hmm. I did my own proof of concept with the effectiveness of social media, online PR, and online marketing with the fiction series that I write. And it had been a lifelong dream of mine to write a fiction series After I left corporate and started my own business, I did land both an agent and a publisher for that series, and my publisher for the first four books was based in England. Well, I knew that I wanted to reach out. The books were going to be distributed internationally. I knew I wanted to reach out to readers everywhere, Europe, U.S., Canada, Australia, and I also knew that I couldn't be in everybody's local bookstore. So Mm -hmm. social media was pretty new then. This was about 2007. But it was free and it was global, and so I got out there in a big way. I started blogging. I got on, well, at the time, MySpace and then later Facebook and Twitter and YouTube. I reached out to other people who were blogging and on social media that were in my genre, and it worked. In the first six months, we sold about 50,000 copies of that first book, and if, if you know anything about publishing, publishers start doing a little happy dance when you sell 15,000 copies, yeah. 50, 50. Wow. And the next book came out, and we saw the same kind of success. And at that point, other authors and publishers started coming up to me and saying, I don't know what you're doing, but it's working. Can you teach me how to do that? And 
I saw how well it was working. I brought it back to the other side of my life, which was Dream Spinner Communications, my marketing consulting firm, and said, Mm -hmm. all right, guys, I've gone out there and tested this. I know for sure that it works. Now let's bring it back to how to promote your companies and adapt it to what you're doing on the business side. And I found that uh, it really does work. So that's the message I'm trying to spread And hopefully my 30-day system makes it easy to get your arms around how to do it in just a few minutes a day. That's intriguing. Now, to be really clear, you started with the fiction book marketing, right? I started with the fiction book marketing with social media. And then, because it was so successful, brought it back over to the marketing side, the business marketing side of what I do. And... That was actually what attracted the publishers for my two nonfiction series, uh, Career Press with the 30 Day Results Guide series, and Comfort Publishing with the Thrifty Author series of books that I write on book marketing. They mm-hmm. both were aware of the success that I'd had with fiction. They knew my underlying expertise was in marketing. And so that was um, a big selling point when. Uh, I pulled the books together that uh, they they really knew that I walked the talk. That's fascinating because you know, the fiction is usually the hardest to sell. So that really was an excellent um, example of the skills that you had in this area. Well, it, it came down to one of the central premises that I, I talk about in the 30 Days to Social Media Success book and the 30 Days to Online PR and Marketing book, and that is – being very clear on who your target audience is. You know, they're close to a billion people on Facebook now. But the good news is you don't have to talk to all of them. In fact, you shouldn't be trying to talk to all of them. You only want to talk to the people who represent the ideal prospect for your business. And, you know, and I love that. I did go ahead and, and got your book from Amazon mm-hmm. and have been working through it in my my practice, I, I help people build their business from the back end, from the ground up. And what I absolutely loved about this this newest guide of yours, the PR marketing one, was that you, you start with a business plan, but very differently from a lot of, you know, if you go to the SBA or some of these um, business training programs, you know, they don't really get into, you know, well, your PR and your marketing activities are an essential part of your business plan. Um, I love that you really start with the foundation. Can you talk a little bit about that? Sure. Uh, The first seven chapters in the books set your foundation. It's really creating your power position. And it starts with getting total clarity on your number one business goal and on your ideal target audience. So the business plan you're talking about in my books, it's not the kind of business plan you could take to a bank to get a loan or, or that the SBA, Small Business Authority, would help you create. Instead, it's really honed in on knowing exactly what you want to achieve for your business this year, who you need to reach to make that happen, what that audience needs to do to help make that happen, and then what messages do you need to convey to that audience so that they know what to do are willing to do it, excited about doing it, and more importantly, recognize that you offer the solution to whatever problem, pain, or fear is keeping them up at night. So it really is making sure that you're absolutely clear on your foundation, and once that's in place, it makes it so much easier to decide what, you, what are you going to say when you go out on social media? Which social media sites should you be on? Who should you be trying to become friends with? Uh, who do you want to have follow you on Twitter? Once you get that initial piece really locked down, all the rest of it becomes much clearer. You know, that is just so brilliant. I want to make sure that we really, really, really hammer on that you know, here, here right now is that if you don't know who you're talking to... <laughs> And you don't know what you do for them or what results you offer to them. Really, everything that comes after is kind of just a bunch of noise. Well, and there's a lot of that noise out there. And I think that's why many people have tuned out somewhat on Mm -hmm. social media because there are a lot of people out there doing it badly. It's not a pitch fest. Nobody wants to be bombarded with messages that are nothing but buy my product. Why? What's in it for me? Why should I? What's it going to do for me? 
And if you can't answer that question in terms of why I need your product, then you haven't done your homework and you're spamming me. You're not helping me. On the other hand, if you've identified that I'm somebody who really needs what you have to offer and the content you're sharing convinces me of that, I'm going to line up with my checkbook or my credit card because you've got what I want. So it has to be first and foremost about meeting that need or solving that problem. And then the other big thing that gets forgotten with social media these days is that it's not a broadcast, it's a conversation. That's a great point. That's a great point. You know, I love that... um, one of the big things that I've noticed have changed over, you know, the last decade or maybe decade and a half is that people are really, like you said, they're not, they're tuning out, they're, they're saturated with, you know, quote unquote hype marketing messages and things like that. They're tired of the, the cookie cutter approach and uh, getting into that conversation with, I understand what your problem is. Tell me how I can help you so I can create solutions for you type thing. Um, What are some of the ways that you've seen PR and marketing changing um, from maybe even 15, 20 years ago to today? Well, the Internet really changed everything, and it did so in a couple of ways. One is you've probably already noticed that there are some magazines and newspapers that aren't around in paper form (laughs) anymore. Uh, Some of the ones that have survived have really cut back on their lifestyle section or their book reviews or some of their other sections. If they've kept them at all, those have moved online or maybe they've just dropped the staff to do them. And so what's happened is many of the traditional channels for that kind of information have gone away and they've been replaced by a lot of citizen journalists who have sprung up to review books or review products or talk about um, local enter- the local entertainment scene. Right. So that has created, while it, while it closed the door on some traditional outlets for your press releases and your news, it opened a much bigger door because there are many more of those citizen journalist sites out there than there ever were newspapers or magazines to begin with. So you've got the survivors of the traditional media plus all this new media. And the media cycle has changed. It used to be that if you wanted news, you had to either wait till the evening news at 6 and 11, tomorrow's newspaper, next week's news magazine. Now, the news is 24-7 online, and it's updated about every 10 minutes. So that has created this insatiable hunger for information. And the dirty little secret is the media can't generate all of this on their own. They need to have right. your press releases, your article pitches, your interviews, just to be able to fill that content. But you have to know how to approach them and what to give them to not be filtered out of spam. That's a great point. And, and it just occurs to me also, you know, we're talking about people can have news on demand or information on demand. They're only pulling in the information that they're really interested in. Oh, absolutely. People are filtering out the information that they don't want to hear, whether it's information that upsets them or that they disagree with or whether it's information that they're just not interested in. They don't even have to look at that section of the paper. They, they just skip it all together. Because yes. something, something else happened with the Internet that, that also was a huge change. In traditional PR, in order for your news to ever reach the reader, it had to go through a series of gatekeepers. Those were the reporters yes. and the editors and the radio hosts and the programming uh, managers at the stations who would decide what was interesting and what wasn't, what could become news and what didn't. And if they didn't think your news was newsworthy, it never got to the readers or the viewers. Fast forward to the Internet. If you post your press releases online and they are keyword optimized so that they've got the words in them that people looking for what you provide are likely to type into a search engine like Google, you may not have to even go through a media gatekeeper to get to your ultimate consumer because if they go out and search for what they need, they're very likely to turn up your press release, click through the links in your press release right to your sales page, and they've found their solution without having 
to have it presented to them by some other third-party news organization. So you've got the best of both worlds. Yes. Your release could, could be discovered on some of those sites by journalists. It could also go directly to the consumer. That is so relevant. You know, I know, especially with my people who are solo-based professionals, you know, we just had the hardest time at the beginning of the of 2000, 2003, you know, talking to the business journal, you know, chambers of commerce, because, you know, oh, nobody's interested in that small of a business. Well, today, you know, we see that those solo pro businesses are out there and they're hungry and they always have been. But that gatekeeper that you're talking about really was in the way. And thank goodness that uh, that this has given us a way to get around them. To our well, hungry and, audience. And I think it's also given consumers a way to be able to go directly to the kind of news that they need. So it's really a win-win all the way around. Of course, the key is you need to know how to write that press release. You need to know what keywords are going to deliver best for your company. And you also have to understand some of the professional courtesies and etiquette around doing uh, PR in this internet age. Great point. Professionalism really does count, doesn't it? Oh, it's huge. And if you put out a press release that is in the wrong format, that is sloppy, that isn't written well, that has misspellings, um, that doesn't follow the rules, you're not going to look credible. It's not going to help you, and it could indeed you know, really hurt your credibility. Excellent point. You know, I know a lot of solo pros who want to be just a little lax and casual. I'm, I'm a big one for casual, um, but I think that's a great thing to keep in mind is that, you know, it's all about perception. And if what you're putting out there doesn't give the perception of professionalism or expertise, you're sabotaging yourself. Well, it's certainly fine to be casual as in not stuffy and certainly not pompous. But it should never be casual as in not professional. Yeah, no LOLs. Huh? <laughs> I, I loved your book. I, I'm intrigued by the layout. Um, you kind of explain one tiny morsel, and then you have an exercise. You know, stop here, do this now <laughs> before you move on. Um, I'm intrigued by that. Why did you decide to lay this book out that way instead of like a textbook where you read all the way through it? Well, you know, for one thing, business owners are too busy to read textbooks. So yeah. I wanted this book to actually be read. And the idea was that you could read the chapter and take the action steps at the end of each chapter in 30 minutes a day. So the chapters are only about five to seven pages long. There are one or two ways you can immediately put to work what you've read in that chapter. And I wanted people to be able to work their way through the book, spending that 30 minutes a day, so that by the end of 30 days, they had a strategic online PR and marketing approach up and running and starting to create results. That is excellent. You know, let's, I, have, I have a great question for you that I know some of my people have been struggling with. And in your book, you call it the ready, fire, aim kind of <laughs> <laughs> approach. And, um, you know, it comes from, well, you know, I'm trying all these tasks. I'm trying to do what everybody's telling me to do, but I'm not seeing results today. You know, <laughs> I sent out something this morning and there's no results, you know, this afternoon. <laughs> Kind of an effect. Can you talk a little bit about that kind of scattered approach? I love the ready, fire, aim. You know. <laughs> well, it, this goes back in part to that planning that we talked about. If you don't have a real lock on what you're trying to achieve and who you need to talk to to achieve it and what you need to say to them, your marketing efforts will be all over the place. And they're not going to get you the kind of results that you could get because they're, they're going to be counterproductive. Nobody's going to be quite sure what it is you want because you're not sure. Nobody's going to be quite sure who you serve because you're trying to serve everybody. Right. And your, your message will be muddled. You'll also be wasting a tremendous amount of time. You'll be frustrated because you're putting all this time in and nothing seems to be happening. So coming back to that planning, having a clear plan 
is going to cut through that clutter. It's going to make it very easy for you to determine which opportunities are right for you and to say no without guilt to the ones that aren't right for you. Good point. You're, you're going to have a way to measure your success. That's a great point. And I, I, one other little piece that I pulled out as I've been working through these myself is it's okay to maybe have two or possibly three target markets, but you must have a priority market. Um, you know, they've got to be well, prioritized. Sure. And I think you can also speak to several markets as long as you do it through different channels. So, for example... I have completely different websites for my fiction books than for my nonfiction mm. books. There's a small group of overlap of business owners who like to read the kind of fiction I write and people who find me through their fic my fiction who are also interested in social media and online PR. But for right. the most part, they're two very separate groups, different events, different approach. And that's a so, great, that's such a cool point. I, you know, I want to hit on that for a lot of our listeners is that you really can dilute your credibility when you try to present yourself in different ways. Oh, yeah. I mean, how many times have you gone to a networking event and you meet someone yes. and they say, hi, I'm Jane Smith. I'm a lawyer, but I also sell Avon. And then every yes. second Saturday, I also <laughs> sell jewelry. And by the way, I run a house cleaning company and you're going, well, who are you today? Yes. Uh, yes. That it's fine to have. I'm. Um, it's fine to have multiple companies. I'm a big believer in multiple streams of income. Mm -hmm. But separate the streams. So, for my fiction books, I have a completely different website. I have different Twitter, different Facebook, different live events, uh, different strategy than for my nonfiction books, which have their own websites and social media sites and press releases. I don't try to do everything in the same bucket. That is such great advice. It kind of, I don't know, for some reason I got, you know, the, the image of Batman showing up somewhere where, you know, his alter ego was supposed to show up. You know? yeah, I, well, you know, I have that, that problem personally where I'll be sitting in an airport going, okay, who am I when I get off the plane? Which, which of me am I? And I do have a website that is just my name, gailzmartin.com, where it says, if you're looking for Gail's fiction, go here. If you're looking for Gail's nonfiction, go here. And if you want Gail the speaker, go here. Um, just in case you search on my name, because you don't know the names of my other websites, that'll get you to the right place. And, and I have so seen people who were business contacts who joined my fiction you know, Twitter feed, and I'll go out and say, you know, you're welcome to stay here if you like fiction, but if you're wondering why you heard me speak about marketing and now I'm talking about vampires, you're actually on my <laughs> fiction Twitter, and I think you want Gail Martin PR instead of Gail Z. Martin. <laughs> However, marketing vampires sounds really interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Well, let's talk just a few moments. I was really intrigued by, you know, you have a chapter called Mining Your PR and Marketing Gems from your business plan. Can you talk a little bit? Would you share a little bit of those gems? Well, I think a lot of times companies take for granted some of the amazing results that they get because for them that's business as usual. And I realized this when I was still working in corporate. I, I was working for a very large rehabilitation hospital. And on a routine basis, I would see new patients come in uh, flat on their back on a gurney, and three months later, they'd walk out the door. And it was miraculous. Mm -hmm. But when I went to talk to our treatment staff to get success stories, believe it or not, they couldn't come up with any because yeah. then that was business as usual. And I said, well, what about the guy who, oh, yeah, well, yeah, he just walked. He yeah. didn't look like he was ever going to walk again when they wheeled him in. <laughs> you know, 2,000 so, years ago, that was a big deal when a guy made somebody walk. <laughs> and some of these people came in pretty close to that point, let me tell you. But the point was the treatment staff were so used to getting near miraculous results that it wasn't special to them anymore. So that's one thing to, to remind businesses is take a look at what you help your clients achieve. What is business as usual to you may be somewhat miraculous to people who really want to get those results from, for themselves. 
You know, there's another, a really, you know, you call that a gem. It's a really important kernel. So many times I come up with solo pros who, I call it uh, unconscious competence. It's something mm-hmm. that they're so used to doing and getting just brilliant results that they don't think of saying, hey, this is important. You can't do this on your own. Well, I think, you know, for most people, we're more likely to decide, oh, if I can do it, it must not be that special. Oh, mm-hmm. well, it, you know, if I can do it, I'm sure everybody can do it. And that's not true. Um, and and I see this time and time again with people who have a tremendous talent at something where I'm all thumbs with that, or I don't have the interest yeah. to acquire the skill base necessary. And yet they just breeze through it because they, they have a combination of natural talent and acquired skills. And right. they just think every, they don't think anything of it. Um, that's one of those gems where it is not being arrogant or having a swelled head to be no. honest about what you do well and realize that we all have different gifts. So the person who doesn't have a gift to do what you do well really, really needs you to do it for them. You know, that is such a brilliant point. It kind of kind of segues naturally into my next question about your real story and your true voice in that, you know, it, you, you're right. It isn't bragging when you say, you know, I, I, this is easy for me. Let me help you with this. That's kind of really what business today is all about. When you get to the bottom of it, here's something that I do well. Let me help you with it. Let's talk about, you know, your real story and that true voice um, and why it's so important today especially. Well, one of the things that most businesses struggle with is how to differentiate themselves from their competition. So whether you're an accountant or a lawyer or a house cleaning business or some other kind of consultant or service provider, you probably aren't the only person providing that service. So what makes you different and what makes you special? And that's where I... You know, I kind of looked over the years, how had I helped my clients drill down on that? And I realized that a lot of it came to be the story of the passion that brought them into the business. Mm. And that would be a, there, there are five different flavors of that story. And when you find which flavor of real story tells your story in the most compelling way, that is going to be unique to you. And nobody else, no matter how good they are at what they do, will have that same story. And the real value of this story is that it's going to resonate with a certain subpopulation of the potential prospects out there. And the people with whom it resonates are going to be your best ideal prospects because it's going to touch their heart it's going to touch their mind. They're going to see a little of themselves in you. For some emotional reason, it's going to make a connection. And assuming that you and your competitors are all equally competent, that's what's going to make them say, I want to work with her. Yeah, that is such, there's another a gem, a real kernel of brilliance there. Um, I like to say, you know, birds of a feather flock together. We all, you know, especially solo pros feel so isolated and alone in their journey with their business. And and I think that that is just such a brilliant marketing point to say, you know, hey, I'm like you. I've been down that road before that you're traveling now. Let me help you. Um, Absolutely. And, And your true voice goes along with that. Your true voice is made up of the words that your customers are using to describe your business your employees are using to describe your business, the words that come naturally to you when someone asks you what you do. And go back and read the testimonials and the thank you letters that you've gotten from your customers. You're going to see the same words and phrases show up over and over and over again. Great point. Make a list of those words and phrases and start using them in your marketing, in your social media, in your elevator speech, because these are the words and phrases that are the most compelling to your current satisfied clients. 
And so those are power words. That's why I call them your true voice. Start using those words and phrases everywhere because it's already been proven that those mean something right. to the people who would be your ideal audience. You know, I think that that's so brilliant. You know, like I want to kind of pause and tell our, our listeners, you know, hey, listen up. This is brilliance here um, because people have become so saturated that they're not listening anymore. So when you do use those power words, it's like they're talking to themselves. Oh, hey, wait a minute. This means something real. Sure, sure. And, and these are the words also that when you ask your clients what their, you know, your prospects who become your clients, well, what's your biggest challenge? They're going to, you're going to hear the same words and, and issues and concerns mm -hmm. over and over again. Well, those concerns and problems are also the language that's going to resonate most with your target audience out there. So start letting people know that that's what you solve and use that language that's just been provided to you by your <laughs> prospects and clients. It seems almost like a no-brainer, doesn't it? <laughs> I, it does, but you know, it it isn't as obvious as you'd think it would be, and yet it's once not. you tap into this, it's so powerful. That is huge. I want to just take a second to remind our listeners that you're listening to Solo Pro Radio. I'm your host, Barbara, the Solo Pro Success Coach, and my guest today is Gail Martin of GailMartinMarketing.com. That's Gail with a G, A I L. Martin, M-A-R-T-I-N, marketing.com. You can also find Gail on Facebook, 30 Day Results Guide, all one word. And check out those sites. You can win some free books or maybe some coaching. And Gail's got a great uh, uh, offer for you today we'll talk about in a little bit. But if you'd like to join in the conversation with us today, maybe ask Gail a question. I see the chat, box, chat room down um, on the site is busy. I've been seeing people going off over that gatekeeper thing. You really hit a, a nerve there, Gail. <laughs> Let's dive back into our conversation. I love that you talk about touches to transactions. Um, that's, that's really kind of a different concept. Let's talk a little bit about that. Well, marketing research shows us that it takes 7 to 30 touches to turn a window <laughs> shopper into a buyer. That's a and, big span. Well, it is. And, you know, if you think about the way you behave as a consumer, if you've got an immediate need, it's going to take fewer touches than if it's something you're just thinking about or that you know you need but you don't need it right away. Right. Uh, so if, if you have an immediate need, you may uh, look at consumer reports and see what the top rated item is in, in what you need and then run out to the store you know you ha that has it and go buy it. And you may not even worry too much about a small variation in price because, you know, let's be honest, if your refrigerator isn't working, yeah. you need a new refrigerator. Been there. <laughs> but now think about maybe you're, you'd like to get a new car, but your old car works just fine. You know, you're just okay. kind of collecting information. So you slow down, you look at the car ads. When one comes on TV, you actually sit through it instead of getting up and getting a snack. When you drive past the dealership, you sort of slow down and look at what's in the front row. Maybe you stop in on a Saturday and you take a test drive. You go out to the website and you build your own car with the colors and the upholstery. So mm -hmm. you're window shopping. But the day you walk out and the transmission falls out of your car, yeah. now you have an urgent need to buy – where are you going to go? You're probably going to go back to that dealership that was nice to you when you came in, no pressure, let you take the test drive. But that's what I mean by touches to transactions. So that example would be closer up to the 30. Plus, we know that when people are a little more conservative with their spending, when times are a little tougher, people are watching their pennies, they're going to put off even the purchases they know they need as long as they can, which again pushes them up toward that 30. If you try to make all of your touches in the same way, you're going to come off as a stalker or a spammer, okay? <laughs> if you call your prospects every single day, are you ready yet? They're yeah. going to report you. If you email them every day, they're going to block you. But now suppose you send an email, you follow it up with a personal phone call, 
They give you permission to send them your newsletter, so they get a copy of your newsletter. They, they like your Facebook page, so now they get your posts on Facebook and on Twitter. And you run into them at a networking event, and then they listen to your podcast. You've made multiple touches, right. but since they haven't happened through the same vehicle, it doesn't feel like you're harassing them or chasing them. It seems very natural. And yet all of those touches have helped to keep you top of mind so that when they're ready to buy, they're likely to come to you first. You know, that's a brilliant, I, I love that you talk about these different channels. I've, I've heard so many solo pros say, oh, well, Internet marketing is so impersonal. I want to do all of my approach through, you know, offline networking meetings, which I have to say just makes me cringe. <laughs> But I love that you point out that, um, yes, you can build a relationship, you know, in different channels using online methods. Offline is great, too, if it's possible, but, you know, you can integrate the two. But how powerful to have, you know, your podcast and your newsletter and, and these other things uh, that you can use as channels. Well, and don't forget, if you have a, a press release out there and somebody hears your interview or sees an article about you, or searches and finds your press release, those are all more touches. You know, they visit your website. That's a touch. So, you know, the thing we forget because we're so focused on what we want to achieve as business owners is right. that customers buy when they're ready to buy, not when we have an urgent need to sell. Great point. And so our goal is to educate them, to create a relationship with them, to stay in touch with them, so that when they're ready to buy, they think of us first. That's, that's you know, I, I love that you're kind of talking about positioning here. Mm-hmm. You need to be in position. And I always prefer the word positioning over branding. Um, I know corporations used to use the word branding, but to me that's, you know, hot metal seared into your flesh type thing. Um, positioning is just being in the right place, being, you know, an authentic person, being, you know, the expert that you are, and letting the people build that relationship to you. Well, and, and it is a relationship issue. You know, I've had people say, well, what's the ROI on social media compared to radio or TV? And I tell them, you're right. asking the wrong question. Good point. Social yeah. media... Uh, is not a broadcast medium. It would be better to say, you know, can you answer what's the ROI on your chamber membership? What's the ROI on your professional association membership? Mm -hmm. Those are networking and relationship-driven organizations, and that's exactly what social media is in a different format. That's an excellent kind of mindset shift, actually, really. It's not a broadcast, it's a conversation. It's not a broadcast, it's a conversation. And when you broaden that to online PR and marketing, think about it that you're not advertising, you're inviting people to join the conversation. So if you run a Facebook ad that encourages people to come to your Facebook page and you have a fan gate graphic on your Facebook page that asks people to like your page in order to get to all the good stuff you post, Mm -hmm. you have invited people to join the conversation and kind of qualified to make sure they're really interested. Sure. But you aren't pushing something on them that you want them to buy whether they need it or not. Excellent point. You're inviting them to a party and not a sales call. (laughs) Right. Right. And, And if you demonstrate sufficient credibility and you make that emotional connection with them and you have a solution to the problem that's keeping them up at night, uh, they are much more likely to buy from you. Excellent point. I I know we're getting close to our time, but I wanted to ask, you know, we've been talking about online media and just kind of mentioned offline media. Are there some ways to tie what you're doing online to your offline efforts? Absolutely, and I tell people social media and online PR are not magic bullets or or magic wands. I think they work best when they are the glue that helps tie everything together. So, Mm. for example, 
if you're running an ad in the newspaper, and there's some valid reasons to still do that depending on your business, make sure that you've got, you know, like our Facebook page to get special offers and discounts. Now you've given them a what's in it for me to go to your Facebook page. Once they like your page, you now have that opt-in permission through Facebook to stay in touch with them through your posts. Or uh, invite your newsletter readers to like you on social media and follow you. I, I create in my newsletter, I let people know the themes of what I'm going to be talking about on my blog, my Twitter, my Facebook mm-hmm. page, so that they have a reason to look for my posts on social media instead of saying, oh, yeah, I liked Gail's Facebook page. I'm, I'm done now. Well, right. if they like the theme, they're going to come back and make sure they look at my new post because I'm talking about something of interest to them. Excellent point. I want to make sure that uh, we tell our listeners that they can come in and visit you on uh, gailmartinmarketing.com and they can come on over to your Facebook page since that's what we're talking about <laughs> at mm-hmm. facebook.com slash 30 day marketing and it's the number 30. Don't spell out the 30 word. 30 day results guide. 30 day results guide where they can come in and read, read uh, get some free books. Maybe get well, some they can enter to win. A, they can enter a contest, and the contest winner will get uh, both of my books as well as oh, uh, cool. some coaching. So Tell us a little bit about contest. that contest. Pardon? Tell us a little bit about the contest. Well, uh, when you come to my Facebook page, you'll see, uh, and that's the 30-day results guide page, you'll see a, a like this page to enter, and everybody who likes the page is entered in a contest. I'll be doing a drawing for... Um, copies of my two newest books as well as some free coaching and you know as we were talking about uh, at, at the beginning before we went on the air for anybody who's listened today and says wow you know I got to read these books but I think I also need some help with this as a thank you for having me here as a guest if you send me an email to gail at gailmartinmarketing.com and mention that you heard me on this radio show put the name of the show in the subject line uh, I have some nice discounts on my two most popular coaching packages that can save you up to $500. But tell me you heard it here, and that way I can report back and say, hey, thank you so much for having me on the show. What an incredibly generous offer, Gail. Thank you. And uh, our listeners, I'll be putting that in our e as well, Solo Pro News. Um, thank you so much for joining me today, Gail. And can people buy your books on your site, or should they go to Amazon? Actually, my books are available in bookstores everywhere. And, of course, you can find them on Amazon.com or BarnesandNoble.com. And uh, so – and. The uh, 30 Day Results Guide, 30 Days to Social Media Success, is also available in FedEx Office stores nationwide, as well oh. as Office Max stores. Well, excellent! And I, I, you know, thank you so much. And I want to tell everybody, I have been loving. I got both books, and I have been working through them and have been learning so much. And I thought I knew it all. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for having me on the show today. This has been a lot of fun. You're a kick. Thanks so much. And thanks thanks to all our listeners for joining us. I want to invite you to join me again next Thursday at 1 p.m. Eastern Time, 10 a.m. Pacific, when my guest will be Bill Patty. He is your voice professor, and he provides training to improve voice and speech skills to individuals nationwide. So if you're thinking of adding speaking to your business, you'll want to tune in for that. You can learn more about our upcoming shows daily uh, by or by coming to hello by coming to soloproradio.com if you want to learn how to attract and engage high paying clients swing by soloprosuccess.com and pick up my free income accelerator success kit and i want to remind you that i've got an in-depth feast and famine cycle solution that you're sure to love and i'm going to share it with you for free by hosting my brand new content packed training call where i'm going to share my secrets it's called three simple steps to break free of the feast or famine cycle for solo pros you'll make more money get higher paying clients and streamline your business the no cost call is happening next wednesday get that on your calendar february 8th at 6 p.m pacific if you're in a hurry, want to reserve your spot for this training call, run to Tiny Earl. That's 
T-I-N-Y-U-R-L dot com slash break free hyphen call. Um, finally, if you'd like to sponsor Solo Pro Radio and get some extra visibility on my association site and in my weekly easing, the Solo Pro News, go ahead and contact Dean Piper at W4WN Radio by calling 561-506-4031. And he'll set you up. I want to just hit some of the great kernels and gems that Gail mentioned today. Develop your true voice. Know who you're talking to. And be authentic when you're, when you're developing a conversation with them. It's really more about positioning yourself about, as the expert who knows what you're talking about in front of the exact people who need your help. Thanks so much for joining us on today's call. <music> 